Hey guys, let's talk a little bit about cholesterol. I wish that I had just a dime for every time somebody said to me, I can't do keto because I'm worried about my cholesterol or my doctor's having a fit. And this is the one that kills me every single time because people will have done keto and they'll have had amazing success. Their hemoglobin A1C is better. They're losing weight finally after struggling for a long time. And they go to the doctor and the doctor says, you lost weight, you look great, your blood glucose is good, but your cholesterol is through the roof. And they want them to stop that keto diet. And it just makes me a little crazy because there's so many markers that matter for our overall health. And I'm gonna link for you some resources at the end of this video. So make sure you take the time to visit those, especially if you've ever wondered, what about my cholesterol? Here's the short thing that you need to know. Total cholesterol, that big number that they give you, is generally pretty meaningless. You want to look at the individual markers. You wanna look at your HDL, and for women, that's over 50, I think, I'm gonna double check. For women, that's over 50, and men, over 40. So a lot of times what happens is your cholesterol goes up, your good cholesterol, that HDL, yeah, over 40 for men and over 50 for women is where you wanna be. And so sometimes you'll see it go from you know, a low number, 36 to 54, and of course your total cholesterol is going to go up. So if you look at those individual numbers and your HDL has gone up, that's a good thing. Now, let's talk about another important number. That's your triglycerides. And in general, triglycerides, you want them to be under 150, you know, over um, under 100 is great. We, um, you know, people start to get antsy, 199, 200, they get above 200, and that particularly can be a bad sign. But something that physicians don't always tell you is that your triglyceride number is often linked to blood glucose control. So if you're diabetic, if you have really high blood glucose, then you're automatically going to have higher triglycerides level, triglyceride levels. <laughs> if you do keto and you're able to control your blood glucose, then most of the time your triglycerides are going to come down over time. So that's really important over time. You've got to give it time. They didn't get high over a week or two weeks or a month. It took several years of eating high carb processed and refined foods. So if you are going keto and you're eating really healthy, good meats, vegetables, dairy, eggs, then you're probably going to see improvements in that, especially if you have good glucose control. The one that people get really freaked out about is your LDL cholesterol. And that can go up when you're following a, a ketogenic diet. For the most part, and I'm not gonna tell you that it's irrelevant, for the most part, LDL isn't troubling if you have other markers that are good. If your blood pressure is good, your triglycerides are good, your HDL is good, your hemoglobin A1C or your fasting blood glucose is good, then LDL may not be something to worry about. If you have any doubts about your cholesterol, particularly with those other factors, if you have a history of heart disease for you or someone in your family, then get a calcium score, a CAC score, and that's actually looks at your arteries and sees if there's any buildup or plaque. And that's another way that you can reassure yourself. We have lots of cardiologists now that are using a ketogenic diet for heart health. Dr. Brett Shear, who works with me on Diet Doctor, is one of them. And again, I'll link some resources to you about keto and heart disease and about cholesterol. Take the time to educate yourself and learn about those individual numbers because your doctor may or may not break down each of those and explain to you those keys to success.